would like to lead off this evening's video by asking my audience a very simple question. Is it better to be a lonely lion than a popular sheep? Now, I'm sure the vast majority of my audience all has one opinion on this. Florida Maquis, clearly, it is much better to be a lonely lion charting your own course than being a popular sheep just doing whatever the crowd does. The quote from Robert Frost on the right reflects this. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Now, when you read this, a lot of people take something very positive from it. But nowhere in that quote does it say that that difference was a good difference. It makes no distinction whatsoever, just that it made a difference in the man's life. Now, what if I told you I could, by the end of this video, show you something that would completely change your mind on this? 180 degrees, you would say, you know what? You know what, Florida Maquis? There was probably a good reason that less traveled by road was less traveled by. Now, high alert, top alert, brand new, brand new Battlefield of the Mind video posted over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. Only about a couple hours ago. Now, that version of this video goes a lot deeper into the how and the why and the mechanics of why people think that it's better to be the lonely lion, even though in their daily life, they are the popular sheep. That is the case virtually in every corner of politics or demographics or whatever group you want to assign. Now, if you'd like to join us at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel, one U.S. dollar per month, that's it, even less. If you sign up for an entire year, fully refundable, first 90 days, no questions asked. Love to have you over there. Thank you, by the way, for all of your prayers and all of your suggestions. I think I'm 99.99% .99 over the voice issue I've had the last few weeks. So without any further delay, let's get right into it. Now, how many of you can see the secret message in this? Some of you have probably seen this on TikTok and other video platforms. The strange thing about this, if those of you who haven't seen it, if you, if you back way out on this and look at this on a much smaller device than I'm looking at it on, like your average phone or even smaller, you see the letters O, B, E, and Y. Now, when I look at this on my phone, it's super easy to see. But when I look at it on my full-size desktop computer, it becomes a lot more vague. And I think that's an important instructional jumping off point because sometimes when we get too close to something, we don't see the truth. Let's start here. Way back when. Who remembers? Well, I mean, you probably didn't live through it. But who remembers the stories of the days of Prohibition? There's a lot of people who have varying opinions on the idea of the federal government banning alcohol. Well... What gets left out of a lot of the stories is that a lot of this alcohol was being made by rogue folks, basements, sheds, bathtub gin, and it was killing people. Bathtub gin, meaning just put a whole bunch of stuff together and cook it all up and distill it and hope it doesn't kill you. Now, theoretically speaking, people would say, I want to be the lion. I want to be the lion that says, you know what? The government should not get involved in this kind of thing. It should be left to the people. But, when it came to your kids, you'd be the sheep. Because what would you counsel your kids? You'd say what? Okay, some guy has a bunch of homemade hooch in the trunk of his car. Don't drink it. You don't know where it came from. You don't know what's in it, especially those of you who have daughters would tell you this is a bad idea. This is a really, really super bad idea. In the modern world, if you want to have a beer, if you want to have a drink or something, and you're old enough to, come over, we'll get some real beer and some actual whatever, and we'll sit around, we'll make drinks. But just some random out there with just unmarked 
mason jars full of something that smells really strong, don't drink it. You see, you'd say, in theory, you'd want that to go on, but in your personal life, at least with advice you'd give your kids, you'd say, hell no. So are you a lion or are you a sheep? Here's even a better one. How many of you had kids lie to you about brushing their teeth? Go brush your teeth, get them out of bedtime. And they go up there and you hear a bunch of playing and running around and they come back down and you're like, did you brush teeth? Yeah. Come here. Smell their breath? No. And that's just the case. But what about all the fluoride in the water? You must hate your kids. How many videos are there on YouTube about, oh, the fluoride in the water. Oh, the fluoride in the water. Oh, it's so terrible. Oh, it's hurting people. Would that be a reason you would tell your kids to not brush their teeth at night? I want somebody down in the comments section to say, yeah, you know what? I prefer my partner, especially first thing in the morning, to not have brushed his teeth or her teeth. That's my preference because of the fluoride in the water. <coughs> now, once again, the lion says, not me. I'm not going to partake in that government conspiracy. They got fluoride in the water. I'm going to uh, distill my own and I'm going to get... You go to the sink and you brush your teeth, don't you? And you tell your kids to brush their teeth. I mean, lady, ladies and or men and whoever in this one. I think specifically the ladies would probably have a much bigger problem with this, but that's just probably my perception of things. Would this be a deal breaker in a relationship? No matter how nice the guy was? If he had teeth like this, that were yellow, and stained, and he gave you some long, drawn-out, blah-blah-blah conspiracy theory about toothpaste and fluoride. Would this be a deal-breaker? Guys, guys, would this be a deal-breaker? I don't care how nice she was, or how pretty she was. It's a deal-breaker. See, it makes you both, in in theory, you want to think, gosh, I'm the, I'm the lion, I'm the, I'm the path less traveled. No, you're not. You're the path well-traveled because most people get up in the morning and brush their teeth and floss. Now think about this for one minute. There's a term out there, not used very much anymore. It's just mostly bouquet. But it used to be called a nosegay that women used to carry when they were getting married. Now, once again, why did they have to do that? Because when you packed two dozen people into a, a church, they reeked. The smell was so bad, it could make you pass out because they didn't bathe. You see, way back in the good old days, the MAGA days, make America great again. Let's go back to before we had all of these chemicals and all of these, these different soaps and different things that, that are ruining us and causing. So are you going to be the person who doesn't bathe? Are you going to be the lion that takes the path less traveled by and be the one who doesn't bathe? No. What about your kids? Of course not. You're going to tell them to bathe. Now, here's where it gets even better. This is a standard Ford Fiesta. They don't make it anymore. But it's a little tiny 1.6 liter, 120 horsepower, two-wheel drive death trap, basically. Now, for driving around town, it's perfectly fine. For mucking around a suburb, it's fine. But this is a Ford Explorer. Much bigger vehicle, much heavier vehicle, much more powerful, bigger brakes. Easier to handle, much smoother. Now, on the highway, guess what happens when you have a whole bunch of semi-tractors, a whole bunch of really big trucks, a whole bunch of really big SUVs, and they make up 90% of the traffic, and a Ford Fiesta goes out there and tries to run at highway speed under the same conditions with them. This is a true story. This is only from about, I think, eight days ago, right down the road here in Ormond Beach. Ford Fiesta, a Toyota Corolla, and a Ranger. Got into a, oops, I didn't mean to do that. And there are people that are no longer with us. 
See, they have no place out here on the road doing this. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. People who buy cars and people who get driver's licenses, based on what they can afford, why should things be different? Why shouldn't everybody drive down to the lowest common denominator? When somebody says the Fiesta, okay, hold on, everybody slow down. Everybody slow down. Uh, yeah, I know we all have ABS and we've got you know 22-inch rims and larger and all sorts of sophisticated uh, radar detection to show how close we are to everybody. And um, we all have that, but this one car doesn't. And if we drive at a speed that's safe for us, it will be unsafe for them. So we need to back everything up. That doesn't ever happen, does it? It doesn't. That's why we have this. I've said for a long time, and this is an aside, by the way, that the most likely survival situation most North Americans are going to find themselves in are going to be one of these major wrecks where the traffic backs up for 16, 18, 20 miles, and you're trapped there for a much longer time than what the authorities had planned for. They do a really good job down here in Florida um, of clearing these things up. But once again, are you going to be the rebel? Are you going to be the, I don't care what anybody says, I'm taking my Ford Fiesta, or I'm going to counsel my kid to take their Ford Fiesta out onto I-95, and if traffic is running at 85, 90, 95 miles an hour, I'm going to say, well, that's what it's going, that's what you drive. That would be silly. Wouldn't it? See this, I had to think of one picture. If I thought of one picture that could describe what makes North American sheep, it's this. <coughs> this didn't happen 100 years ago. People didn't have commodes. People didn't bathe. People didn't shower. They didn't, take, they didn't have the personal hygiene that we have. Even though there's a million conspiracies out there now on YouTube... That will tell you everything you want to know about you know, what you eat and how you digest things and what you should and shouldn't bathe with and how you should and shouldn't take care of yourself. And it's all basically against the idea of basically using soap and water and toothpaste. What about this? What would you, and this one specifically, ladies, what would you counsel your sons on this? Ladies of the night. You had to sit down and say, okay, look, here's your, here's your risk-reward analysis. Would you tell them to go be the rebel? Would you tell them to go, go do the thing that made them the lonely lion? Or would you tell them, hey, most guys, most guys don't engage in unprotected, you know what, with street walkers. Most guys don't. 99.9% .9 of guys don't. Would you teach them to be the rebel in this case? No, of course not. You'd say, look, stay home. Stay home. Safest thing you can do. And that goes the other direction with the ladies too. Most don't. Most don't. But if you had a choice between doing it IRL, as in upper left here, seen from black sales, or just at home, in your perfect safety, behind locked doors, what would you choose? See, there's a reason the path well-traveled is well-traveled. is likely because it's easier, it's safer, it makes more sense, and there are a few people who tried that other path, not so well-traveled, and had some very bad, nasty circumstances arise because of it. Consequences. Consequences is the idea here. See, the idea of being a lonely lion sounds really awesome. Go ask the lonely lion, though. See, that's kind of the, the hard thing when you look back through everything we just talked about. What do I believe? What do I think? Versus what would I tell my kids? So, Battlefield of the Mind stuff. Love to have you at the Patreon channel. God bless all of you. Thank you so much for your patience. I know it took us a couple of weeks to get this last video up, but...
It's up. If you'd like to join us, trust me, it's next level over there. It's gloves off. We talk about the nuts and the bolts of exactly how you can take information like this and make people sit and think about it, about what they really believe. Tactics and techniques, cognitive biases, logical fallacies, they all work together. Love to have you. Dollar a month, fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. Love to have you. Even less if you sign up for an entire year. God bless. Pray for each other. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Lift each other up. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.